Hey, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to be doing a quick video on how to do an oil change on my 2006 Yamaha R6. So uh, it's springtime, I'm just getting it out of winter storage here. I got the cover off of it, taking the battery tender off of it, and uh, we're just gonna do a little regular maintenance, little oil change, just to get it ready to go for the riding season. So it's the first nice day we've had in a while, and uh, it's gonna get this thing done. So I'm gonna walk you through how to do it step by step. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so the first thing we're going to do here, we've got the bike up on the rear stand and the uh, first thing we're going to do is take off some of the plastic body panels. So you're going to need a number 4 Allen socket or Allen wrench to remove some of these uh, little bolts, uh, flush mounted bolts that hold all the body panels on. I'll show you where those are at and then we'll go to the next step. Alright? This panel right here is our 6 panel. We're going to have 4 bolts. One bolt here, one here two up front here. First panel is off. There is a small black push pin right here. You're just going to push in on the center of it. When you get to it, it's going to look flush like this. All you're going to do is take a screw or something that you have, push in on the center of it, and that's going to open it up and allow you to pull it straight up. The next step is going to be removing this main left side fairing here. It's going to be a couple of these number four allen bolts here. One on the very back at the bottom in front of the rear tire. One up here in the very front, right behind the front tire. One in the center here which is real easy to see. And then you're going to have one small one up here on the front that you have to kind of come in from, from the side. Now that you've got these bolts off of here, this panel is going to come right off. There's going to be another, it's going to be another push pin right here. It's going to be right up from your shifter linkage. Same thing, you're going to push in on the center. That's going to allow that panel to come off. Forgot about the one back here underneath the shifter.
there's going to be one electrical connector up here for your turn signal. This bike has flush mounted turn signals on it. Yours might have this factory turn signal sticks out a few inches. Just a simple connector. Just like a little flat blade screwdriver in there. Pull it right off and now your panel's free. Alright guys, so the next step is going to be to remove the shift linkage. You're going to have to get that out of your way so you can remove the oil filter. So you're going to need a 10 millimeter uh, wrench for that. Now, I'm using a ratcheting wrench. Just makes it a little bit easier. You can use a regular wrench, open end, crescent, box end. Um, doesn't really matter, whatever works for you, whatever you got laying around. Uh, but you're going to take that off and I'm going to show you where that's at in a second. We're going to pull the shift linkage off and then we'll be able to get to the filter and the drain plug. Alright guys, so this right here is our shift rod. You got your shifter right here. That's connected to this rod. It goes up to this shaft right here. Right at the top of this shaft, you're going to see a 10 millimeter bolt. It's a pinch bolt. It squeezes this clamp tight around this shaft, so you're just going to want to loosen that up. Again, that's a 10, mil 10 millimeter bolt. bolt off. This clamp's just going to slide out towards you and then this can move back and out of your way. Oil filter is right here. Probably going to be black if you're using a factory filter. So you're going to have to maybe move the shift linkage up and back a little bit to get it out of your way. And you're going to turn that to the left obviously to loosen it up and you're going to want to do that to change your filter. First thing we're going to do though is find the drain plug, drain the oil out, then we're going to take the filter off. Your bolt for your drain plug is right down here. I'll show you a close up of that here in a minute. the drain plug you're going to want to use a 17 millimeter wrench. I use the box end. This bolt goes straight up from the bottom. Start with the wrench towards the back of the bike. Push it towards the front of the bike. And that's going to turn this bolt to the left. Here. Alright, right here is our drain plug, okay? So we've got oil filter. And this black guy right here, straight down and to the left. Comes up from the bottom side. Again, this is going to be our, our drain plug. So we turn that to the left. And now you can see we've got some oil flowing here. Oil is going to go right into our drain pan. Now what I normally like to do is I like to come to the other side of the bike here. This is your oil fill right here. I just broke it loose so you can take that off. So this little cap here. Now it's a good idea to take this off when you're changing the oil and draining the oil. That's going to allow the pressure in the crankcase to kind of equalize. Um, you know, it's going to drain a lot faster and get more of the oil out if you take this off and uh, let gravity do its thing. So take that off, sit that down. we're still draining here. Now while this is draining I'm going to show you how to take the filter off. And we're going to let the drain plug and the filter both drain at the same time. Alright guys so again 
right here is our filter what I like to use is just a regular adjustable wrench you can use an oil filter wrench but it is pretty tight in there so I find that this just works a little better depending on what size wrench you've got vary how far you need it open and you're just gonna go ahead grab your filter like so rotate it to the left after a few turns you should be able to get it the rest of the way with your hand move the shift linkage out of the way what your factory Yamaha filter is going to look like and that's exactly what I want to be replacing it with here's our new filter you're just going to go to the Yamaha dealership or Amazon wherever you're going to get it from whatever year make and model you got when you get your filter you're also going to want to get a new crush washer. This is going to replace the crush washer that's on your drain plug. And take the old one off, put the new one on, and that's going to make sure you don't have any leaks when you're all done this project. We got the old crush washer off. And just stick the new one right over top, like so. Alright, guys, now I like to go in here. Just a regular shop towel. What I'm doing is I'm wiping off the mating surface where the new filter screws on in the block just to make sure there's no dirt, debris, um, anything on there that's going to cause it not to seal real well. Unbox our new filter. And I have this plastic wrap over top. Just peel that right off. Now if you get a factory filter you can see there's an o-ring up top here. It's already greased so you don't have to put any oil or anything like that on it. You literally just screw it on. It's good to go. You don't have to use any tools to tighten this filter up. Hand tight is good. You don't want to over tighten it or crush or um, crack the filter because it's very thin walled metal and it will crush pretty easily if you put your wrench on it or anything like that. So just hand tight is good.
You're gonna take your drain plug with your new crush washer. Put that right down here in the bottom. Take your 17 millimeter wrench. Tighten it up. And you just want to tighten it just enough to crush that crush washer. You don't want to over tighten it, strip it out. You don't want to leave it too loose and have it fall out. Then you're going to have a big problem on your hands. That should be good. Take your rag, just wipe off the exhaust and anywhere else that you may have gotten some oil. Next thing we want to do is put our shift linkage back on. And when you put this on, Right here on the left side of this clamp, you're going to see a dot. And up here on this shaft, you're going to see a line, straight line on the left-hand side. And there's teeth on this clamp, teeth on the shaft. So you can align it and clock it. But you want to put it back so that the line on the shaft lines up with the dot on the clamp. Start your 10 millimeter bolt by hand. Get your ratcheting wrench back out. Tighten that up. So that's done. Now guys, we're just gonna reinstall the body panels in reverse order that we took them off. So I'm not gonna walk you through that step by step, but we're gonna put the big main body panel on first. Make sure you plug your turn signal back in. You don't wanna forget that. And then we're gonna do the smaller accessory panel second. And we're gonna go to the other side, fill it up with oil, and start it up. All right guys, so just like we talked about earlier, right here is where we're gonna fill the oil. You're going to want a real small um, funnel to get this oil in here. I'm using Yamaha's Yamalube. Now I'm running a 20W50. Yamaha recommends in this bike a 20W40 or a 10W30. But I really only ride this bike on really hot, hot days. So I like a nice thick oil uh, and... Uh, you know, I, I don't really ride it on a cold mornings or anything like that. I always let it idle and warm up plenty before I ride it. So I just feel a little bit better running a thicker oil in it. Um, guys at the Yamaha dealership told me it was okay. So uh, that's what I've been running and so far no problem. So you're going to run whatever oil you're going to put in it. But again, Yamalube, pick this up at the dealership. This is 20W50. You're going to want a small funnel. And this bike, this particular bike, 06. Uh, R6, not the R6S, but the R6. Um, this bike happens to be the Raven edition. Not that that makes any difference on oil capacity, but uh, when doing an oil and filter change, uh, the manual calls for a 2.75 or two and three quarters of a quart. Um, so a little less than uh, than three quarts of oil, not a large capacity, so it doesn't take much. Uh, I've got about two quarts left in a jug from the last oil change, and then I've got a brand new jug here as well uh, that we can get the last three quarters of a quart from. So just going to go ahead and pour it in there very slowly so as not to make any mess. Now guys, right here basically right forward of your brake pedal you're gonna see a six-sided little screw guy here that's gonna be your dipstick you go ahead and unscrew that and you can 
can see that there is going to be your dipstick. Got hash marks on it just like your car would. Now you want to check the oil with the bike either on a rear stand like it is now or you're going to want to hold it straight up and down. You don't want to check the oil when it's sitting on its side stand. The bike's going to be on an angle and it's going to give you a false reading. Oil is actually going to be leaning away from the dipstick so it's going to make it look like it's low even if it's not. looks pretty good here guys so I'm gonna grab the key and we're gonna start her up